Can you imagine the value of Frodo's mithril coat in in uh, Rivendell if he actually wore that there? They would be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elrond would be like grabbing it, rubbing his face up against it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode five of the Rings of Power, our in-depth review of an amazing show. Oh, it's so all amazing. The, in all the wrong ways. It's amazing because of how wrong it gets. <laughs> so so we're here to talk about it. Sadly, Dan Coates, the third leg of our unfoldable field chair, is not here today <laughs> because he's uh, his uh, family things, right? He's got to watch his kids. His wife's not around. Anyway, so but but we got some thoughts from him. We're going to bring a couple of those up too. Um, but we're glad we're glad that you joined us. This is going to be fun. We're going to because it was, watching it isn't fun, but commenting on it afterwards with friends and 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 family like this is sort of fun. It's it's a great way to I don't know. It's a catharsis, right? You can get it out of your mouth. We thank you for watching. We appreciate you. If you do like what you're seeing, can you just click the subscribe button down here somewhere and, and like and share? And if you really like what you're seeing, we do have a patron platform at theonering.com slash patron. It's, uh, it gives you access to our Discord channel, gives you access to our message boards when they're launched. They're almost launched. Our extended edition podcast, which will be launching very soon, as well as uh, comments on the site. Uh, it's free for the first month and then $4 a month after that. So if all you want to talk about is the rings of power while it's showing, then sign up and then cancel and uh, you get to move on. Uh, and we get to talk to you for a month. That's great. So anyway, it's at the wondering.com slash patron and we'd love to have you there. So we are going to get into the rings of power episode five partings. Um, and boy, this show, wow. It, it just surprises us at every turn. And Michael, like we were talking just a minute ago and you said that you have notes on the, how many scenes, 16 scenes of this here? 18. There are in oh, fact 18 scenes, 18 18 scenes, scenes of this amazing scenes. show. And 18 yep. scenes and the four plot lines, mm -hmm. um, the, the progression they've made in this show has been tremendous. So why don't you tell us how the last episode ended, Michael, and how this episode ended and where we are now? <laughs> All right. In the words of one of the only remaining characters that I like in this show during the fourth, we will give you the meat and we will give it to you raw. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's a horrible. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Yeah. All right. So at the end of episode four, we have four main plot lines. We have um, the one that we didn't get, see in episode four, which were the D, what I call the DLSs or dirty little sociopaths. So the dirty little sociopaths, the hobbits, were, did not appear in episode four. In episode three, at the end of episode three, they were heading out for their journey and their migration with a wizard in tow. And at the epi end of episode four, with a variety of DLS um, sh scenes showing up of the 18, we are on their migration with a wizard in tow so nothing has happened and why are we on this migration exactly there is no reason because okay. we like dots going across maps yeah, watch the yeah. dots and they look at all these neat neato, neato places going somebody to. figured this out in motion or after effects and was like look guys what i can do dots that's right map. let's use it <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so bad so there's those there's so much for the dlss the second plot line is the Numenor plot line. At the end of episode four in Numenor, we were informed that we were heading to Middle Earth. At the end of episode five, we are informed that we are heading to Middle Earth. And um, yeah, that's it. So no, nothing's happened. I mean, a lot of talking's happened, but that, nothing's happened. We'll go more into the talking. Next, the next plot line, the dwarves. So you have. Um, the dwarves and elves. So at the end of episode four, the dwarves and elves um, were in some sort of, uh, uh, you know, the, the dwarf um, during the fourth was heading to lead into meet with the elven king. At the end of episode five, I guess something happened because dwarf during the fourth is leaving lead in. But they're leaving the most importantly with Disa's table. <laughs> that's the progression that oh got. don't even <laughs> oh oh said we will deeply this storyline will receive the most attention because this is indeed you know i'm, I'm for all you listeners you, you may or may not know that I'm, I'm catholic so so this is what in the catholic theology theological world we would call a mortal sin there are various venial sins that have been committed in this by the show 
But this plot line and the injection of the unreal travesty that they've now, they've now ruined the elves. So they ruined hobbits, they ruined men, and now they're, they've ruined elves as of this episode. So that's the end of that plot line. And then the last plot line is the Arondir and Bronwyn plot line at the end of episode four. We were told that their tower was about, they were in the tower and is about to be attacked. And at the end of episode five, they're in the tower and it is about to be attacked. The attack. So there we go. It's there amazing. The... Is it like, like you really like the, the show has gone almost nowhere in the amount of five and a half hours that it's been on. It's, it's, I, it's I, insane. I, it's, for people to, who, who say like, you just, you just hate it because, because it's not exactly talking. I'm like, no, I just hate it because it's written poorly and it's acted poorly and it's boring. Nothing yeah. happens. Yeah. All right. So wh- yeah. we can take a look at this here. I mean, we, we could probably go for like two hours on the show about all the problems with it, but I think we can focus on the certain things and gloss over the other ones. But we'll we'll walk through the show, um, bringing up the things that we noticed that both okay. are uh, not exactly what Tolkien wrote, and not and in this ep- in this episode, it flies in the face of what Tolkien wrote. It is a complete and utter like detour from from what Tolkien intended particularly when we talk about the elves and this whole literal crap. So anyway, all right. So let's bring up this, this scene here. Um, this is the beginning mm-hmm. of the show when we yes, get... My favorite people. They're first starting with my favorites, the, the DLSs. The DLSs. <laughs> uh, and this is where we get the amazing thing. He, she's teaching him how to, uh, how to talk, right? She's teaching him. <laughs> like, this is how, how you say the word dead or kill or something like that and i love it's kill yeah it's kill yeah um one of our uh one of um uh, one of the folks on our discord channel uh naya she wrote she, she said uh this is where, where nori is teaching gandalf by using other words to make it makes no sense she's he's like kill and she says it means to make something dead i'm like oh of course if you don't know the word kill you're gonna know the word dead you can explain somebody like, teaching them how to how to speak simply by speaking other words doesn't doesn't actually make any sense. No, no so no, this is not how people learn. Nitpicky, people... I guess I don't know. It's the nitpicking is like it's just it's just throwing you know crumbs on top of a giant pound of m- mound of trash at this point. It's just it's, it's weighing it down more and more and more because they have so much of this junk in this, in this episode. So I don't know uh, how much there is to say about this. Do you have anything you want to bring up about this certain part of this episode? Uh, no, no, it's uh, what Naya says is absolutely correct. This is a, a ridiculous idea that she can teach him by just saying words that are synonyms. And he's like, oh, oh, I know the uh, synonym. So somehow I knew what, what death is. I understood the concept of death, but not kill. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just. Uh, and uh, the whole idea that um, the reason that he's good, I think, was it Naya who brought this up too? Well, maybe it was Lanayalin. Lanayalin? I can't remember her name. Uh, is that? Yeah. Uh, but where we only know that he's good based on her saying that he's good because she has a feeling that he's good. This is the whole reason. Again, the, it goes back to like the thing that the, the, the dead horse that we are beating over and over again, that it is now a bloody pulp mashed four feet into the ground is that they're showing nothing. They are telling us everything in this show. Nothing yeah. actually happens. Everything is told. That's right. That's right. And, and the only, and I, and I I'll admit upfront, this is my bias. So my bias is, that I, I see the deeper, what I think are the, are some deeper issues with the script, with the writing of, um, in this series. And I think they stem from a lack of um, depth and backing in the philosophy behind what is essentially modernism, but also the modern screenwriting and, and, and room, writer's room culture. They don't understand philosophy. They, they, they don't understand what the themes that actually made Tolkien um, wonderful to so many over the ages. All they know is the fields. So they're going to do a bunch of things that are just about the fields. And you're supposed to feel a certain way. And the problem is they, they're so bad at that that they don't even t- give us enough to make us care about the characters so that we have the feels. Like I can tell clearly that they're going for the feels. Like we're supposed to from this scene with um, G- Gandalf, Radagast, Alatar, whoever he's supposed to be. We're supposed to get the feels that there's developing this close friendship between the two and, yeah. and that, and he's learning from her, um, which, you know, lots of things to say about that, but, but, but I mean, that's the feels, but I don't even feel that. I'm like, this is just dumb. 
because the feels they're they're based on the ability for us to recognize that their the relationship is established through actions right it goes back to the whole thing like like emotion is not just how you feel it's how you act towards people because i can say i love you and then if not everything that i do shows that i don't love you then then the, the emotion is meaningless so if they don't show us anything at all we'll never get to it i mean it's the very it still drives me bananas it's the very most basic part of fiction writing and you don't have to spend a ton of time but the problem is and maybe we should do this in a whole nother episode is that these writers they come up in schools where they're not taught how to write they're not taught how to read they're not taught that um to respect the kinds of writing that comes before them and so all they read are 20th century literary writers i don't know like I, because they're they're with political viewpoints right that's all they end up yeah, with, right? yeah. And, and so i graduated with a literature degree in in uh, 2004 or whatever and even then right it was it was at the top of what people talked about and i got into it with my professors on that because i'm like no i didn't come here to like learn that uh, a house for mr biswas was about uh indian servitude or something like that I, like it sure it was a fine story but like that's not the reason it was a good story it wasn't because it was made a political point it was a good story because of how it was told and how well it was written so they just don't know they just don't have any practice like they need to fire like and i mentioned this in my other video i think they need to fire the entire the entire staff like they, they're so inept like if they change Tolkien it's one thing but if you change Tolkien and you can't write a good story about what you're changing then it's you know you're, you're doubly game. I agree with you Jonathan and I, and I I'm afraid that if you, you they can't write because they can't read well and they can't read well because they can't think well so yeah. their 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 education is lacking clearly their background their inability to read and so they have an inability to write and so yeah. so that's that's all so all right so next scene is the e evil priestess scene so um and uh, and uh, in the evil priestess scene, oh yeah, we have a bunch of these where we're, uh, yeah. The moon. Anyway, all right. And so the, here, the, yeah, the uh, whatever this is. So evil priestesses, and um, interestingly, the shot. This is a good example, actually, of how bad they are at writing. Another, but a different kind of bad. So, so here is an example of where they're not showing us enough. Like I had to watch this the second time to understand one of the things that's going on in this shot right here. You can see a constellation on that little platter or shield thing. Right. That the, and it turns out that constellation is the same constellation that that um, uh, Encino Man, Encino is, Man. Is, is is yeah that that, that he's um, that he traces when 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 the uh, DLSs are are trying to uh, develop a relationship with him. And so so. But they flash by that so fast, they don't show us enough. Like, why are these people here? Okay, well, clearly we can see that they're looking for Encino Man. But, and it's also s somewhat clear to me that, that they probably are going to, like, worship Encino Man, or maybe they're going to, they're, 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 he's they're going to be their enemy ultimately because they're they worship morgoth and he's a wizard like but how did the wizard how do they know the wizard's coming but anyway we're meant to think that they're like connected with him but they don't but they flash by this so fast that we don't even have the ability to except with internet the internet and pausing and, and like going into details so here's an example of where they're not showing us enough like they're, they're yeah. you're, you're wanting us to care about these characters and their interaction with encino man but they don't give us enough information to care. So I'm like, it's, oh, okay, you're weird. And it's it's amazing to me that they didn't at least introduce them earlier either, because in the first episode, you did have everybody looking at the meteor when yeah, it came over. Yeah. They could have simply shown them, like, I thought that, like in some sort of, you know, why? Clearly, it's like a religious cultish type of thing. Exactly, it's a religion of some sort. They have they have priestly garb of some sort. They have a staff, which is like some kind of. They have accoutrement of some kind. Yeah. Look why didn't we see them and be introduced to them even if they're just looking at the comet passing and they begin to go gather their stuff and look at like that would tell us that there's something but it's, it's yeah, so, this they don't tie anything together no it's just all mystery box it's like oh yeah. this is a mystery box you're Another supposed to mystery. care about it yeah but we don't care about a mystery if there's no point with the mystery goes nowhere exactly. then why would we ever care about it i mean right? so we... your mystery box priestess looks creepy okay fine <laughs> so, like, yeah whatever okay next scene orcs and adar so apparently orcs are vampires they burn in the sun now but they only burn in the sun when it's convenient for the story i would point out right which is so fine. one thing i did like about this was he makes a reference to miss he's going to miss the light and so i i, th I think this is going to be a re this is a reference to the darkness land um that they're in currently which is will soon be 
Mordor yeah. being covered by the eruption of Erodrine. So so pro so he's probably referencing that, and their tunnel probably has something to do with the eruption of Erodrine. Now, instead mm -hmm. of looking for the for the uh, sword, I, I've changed my opinion. It's now it's now probably having something to do with um, Erodrine. So hmm. who knows? Would you say out of out of all the storylines? you're more interested in this one and where it's going exactly. Oh, yeah. I, I find that this is a point at which they could say, well, how did Mordor become Mordor? And I think mm -hmm. this works. I think they're, they're doing something that can actually work. They're telling it in still, still ham-fisted kind of way with the orcs, and he's a leader that they call father, but this father apparently allows them to burn their wrists because he just wants to become emotionally attached to the light still in some way, and he wants to... I don't understand. Like, they're... <laughs> So, but that even, to me, actually, Jonathan, that's more believable. Like, he's the yeah. kind of father to them, that he's like a sado, I, a, yeah. sad, a sadistic sort of yeah. orcish father, which that's a believable in orcish society. The fact that they would respect his cruelty and his strength is believable. That's probably he, true. I, I can go with he, that. He's yeah. an interesting character, um, a corrupted elf. That's an interesting character. The fact that it's tied, like you said, to the beginning of what, it's likely the beginning of the of the founding of the land of Mordor yeah. as, a, as a land covered in shadow and darkness. That's cool. I, I like what they're doing. Um, um, now, what they do, how they do it is ham-fisted, like you said, like the whole orc looking, orcs that look for for the child and can't find him, orcs that shoot at <laughs> shoot at shoot at the messenger that adar specifically let go to give a warning so they they presumably yeah. wouldn't shouldn't be or, attacking yeah. him or orcs that dig ditches straight into trees in the middle of a plane that right could right it's right. all dumb that that how they do it is dumb but the, uh, there are some overarching plot, plot lines yeah. here that I find He's, he, he at so. least is an interesting character because he has some sort of conflict that you could see right. him either diving further into or struggling with throughout the episode whereas other characters here clearly gilgalad has no conflict Galadriel has no conflict Halbrand has kind of a conflict, but since we know he's going to be well, it's a I'm, it's a fake it's a fake conflict agree. because yeah, it's, yeah. yeah you know I, he's going to be Sauron ultimately. Yeah. Right. The conflict within Halbro is simply um, how do I best corrupt the Numenorians and win? Yeah. It's not it's yeah. not what what we're being led to believe. Okay, so next scene: Bronwyn gives impassioned speech. Uh, a bunch of white bigots leave with the other bigots. So so um, we're we're reminded that a she's the only person with shampoo, and b and makeup. And, and makeup so, and and B, she still oh. can't. She's she's still not an inspiring leader. She can't give a speech, which is and and I I would you know, I mean I mean shoes, my goodness, yeah. wow. those are stylish. That is very stylish and <laughs> and not very and not very dirty either. They look not like very they, dirty either. She's the only clean one in the entire city. That's impressive. Anyway, so so the other bigots leave um, with you know primary primary um, tab, tavern, tavern maker. Man tavern man bigots so okay great so yeah humans are bigots uh, it this brought up an interesting point to me why aren't they defending this tower in the first place a what makes them believe they could hold the tower now that the elves are all gone there's really no reason this isn't a helm's deep i, I mean it's a helm's deep situation because they almost like a good 40 percent of everything they do here is trying to call back to lord of the rings so that they can make bucks off lord of the rings so it's definitely supposed to be a helm's deep visual but there is no re unlike helm's deep which was touted as a, a a legitimate you know last stand fortress this is not and they're not soldiers and and there's no reason for for anyone to believe they could hold I, it i think i brought that up the last episode like why did they go even go to this tower like couldn't they have just left the the land like the tower yeah. isn't giving them anything it doesn't it doesn't show that really i mean it's a small space not a there's no weapons there there's not like they're they're training them to fight and then we get to the magic key at the end, or what I like to call the answer 42. In this <laughs> That's right. They know it's a key, even though they don't know what it's for. <laughs> That's right. They know the answer. <laughs> you know. And by the way, the answer was Heidi. I liked how Arondir was like, wait, this reminds me of something. What does right it here. remind me of? <laughs> oh, this elven carving that was five feet away that I've been living next to for years uncounted. That's right. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> but and that's a key somehow that I it reminds me of this being a why is it anyway? Okay. So Numenor. We jump over to the they're clearly in love with their visuals. And part of this here makes me think that this is almost, I don't know, I've played a lot with uh uh AI generated art recently. Hmm. Uh, I've hmm. used that in a couple of uh, the screenshots in there. Um, yeah. One called Mid Journey that does an incredible job. And this looks like that. This is like where you type in a, a phrase where you say, I want the, 
six boats against in a, in a bay with high walls and columns, right? You put all this and some uh, uh, or waterfalls, right? And you get this from AI generated. It's just, it's so much stuff that they're so in love with that they have to cram it all into one scene. And I think it actually takes away from the show. Like, and what well, I, but regardless of whether it takes away, I'm glad you paused it here because let's count how many boats there are in I, this I was picture. Say that too. Yes. Yes. Right. All right. Let's see. There's one in front that we're on essentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's one on the right. That's two. There's three. There's one in the back there. There's four. There's another one in the back there. There's five. I see seven. seven. Six, seven. And I think I see eight, maybe. Maybe eight. Okay. Seven or so, eight. So we know that they have, and this is just like a small piece of a harbor. A harbor which doesn't exist, by the way, because um, the, yeah. the the capital city of Numenor is landlocked. But hey, we're forgetting about it. Don't forget lore. <laughs> so, so anyway, so we're, here we are, and we got eight ships at least, but actually lots more because it's a major seafaring people. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, and we, we get uh, the, the, the tertiary storyline of Isildur wanting to be part of the army, the grand army of the new Numenorians. <laughs> you know what would have been funny is uh, it would have been better had somebody gone um, Great and <laughs> somebody had gone uh, uh, just like uh, Jedi sifo and had created a grand clone army oh, for the Numenorians to use. That's, the Numen that's what they need. They have like 67 people that hang out in their marketplace all the time. So we need to clone a bunch of them and make an army. So what I did like about this scene, uh, you know, I, I think that... Um, the actor uh, that that plays Elendil is um, is one of the two best in the show. Completely uh, agree. Yes. Um, he's he, and I like that he's give, he gives his son some tough love. I, I I enjoyed that. He's basically tells him, "No, I, I'm running, I'm not I'm not going to pull rank for you anymore." And you you basically threw away your chance to be part of the Numer uh, Numerian force, and everybody else has earned it, and it has a sense of responsibility. And what do you have? Nothing. You have. Well, he doesn't say it this way, but the way I said it in my head was, "You have the feels. You feel like you want to. You want to go to uh, the Middle Earth." But now. wait, he has the whispers too, because the whispers of Isildur. He's <laughs> on the boat. I don't, I don't know why they've given us no other place that that makes any sense where it comes from, mm -hmm. or if it, he's just going a little bit crazy from being on the boat too much. I don't know, but he has that going for him, I guess. Sure. But yeah, yeah. The scenes with him are fine. They're trying to give him an arc of some sort, which um, is. We don't. I mean, at least there's no. Well, he has. He, he, they, they have. If they're trying that, they've failed so far. He doesn't oh. have an arc. They're trying but, but, to say he started off as a place where he couldn't. Eventually, he will lead the armies. But right now, he's just a punk kid. That's hmm. that's what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, All right. It's sure. Luke Skywalker, right? That's what they're trying to show. Is like, but I wanted to go in Tashi Station, pick up some power. That's gear. right. That's right. But I wanted to go and like check out the ladies in the dock instead of being here on the boat. Right, but I want, I want. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, yeah. And so then the next part of this scene is Isil, Isil girl, I'm going to call her, which is um, Isildur's uh, <laughs> sister. Yeah. So oh, Isildur's, it's, it's, yes. Isil, Isil girl um, harangues Farazan's son and her with, with the amazing advice that if your father isn't listening to you, just talk louder. Sure, because um, when I talk, his ears are closed. That's right. So talk louder. Great advice. Fantastic. And then we get uh, we get Halbro uh, uh, being badgered by Tarmiel, Mariel, and Galadriel. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, but here I love this point. Just just a little minor detail again. And he's he's creating a sword, right? He's he's mm -hmm. hammering it into a blade, right. and he hands it to the guy, and it's got it's already got filigree on it. Oh, after, <laughs> oh my god! Hands it to him, and this is what he gets. And you can see right there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. On the, on the thing. I'm like, really? That's just at least try to be a little bit more right. Than yeah, you. and it's the sword because it, all it has is the blade and the tang. It doesn't have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't have the hilt actually. A hilt in it. And it yeah. You're. Oh my gosh, that is so bad. So, so let's see. So right there, so he hands it to him right there. It's like, look, it's amazing. There it is. I actually acid etched it already. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Oh. Minor details, but just, major problems. But, but, they, but at a point, after a point, Jonathan, the minor details add up to something. Oh, yeah. you oh, can't, I, I don't. When you pile up enough of them, you can't say they're nothing it. anymore. I get it. Yeah, I totally agree. All right. Anyway. Okay, so we're on. Um, she, she forces Halbro into this meeting because he's the Grand King of the Southlands that has like, right, three right. villages. Hey, I like the stained uh, glass. That that was cool. That's cool. It was nice. Uh, 
yeah. it's got a it's got a, a captain's wheel um mm-hmm. and uh so Beautiful. yeah very good orient <laughs> in this whole scene i don't care about any of this it's, it's, it's like come with us no 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 come with us yes oh no he really meant he's gonna come with us oh, okay so um, by the way tarmariel in this scene says that she staked her cl- her she does her, oh no maybe it's another another scene i don't i don't know what you, you're talking about i, I so I she says that, that she that staked her word or reputation on him coming oh, with them yeah why she does. why did she do that that seems like a really idiotic thing for a ruler to do like random guy that arrived here on a shipwreck two days ago i'm gonna stake all my reputation on him coming with us to middle earth what why and when did that happen by the way stop back, asking questions you're not supposed to be smart back to the evil priestess moment why didn't you show her do her doing that to us since it's apparently it's super important when a regent stakes their their word or their claim on something but she didn't show us no all right no. whatever all right Okay. So we move on from this. Back to back DLSs. To DLSs. Yeah. Um, I just still love that they are pulling their own wagons, as mm. if if you if you were if you were creating wagons to be pulled by people, this is how you would build them. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no. Somebody would actually figure out maybe harnessing them would be a little bit better. Perhaps putting handles that didn't mean you have to reach back. Anyway, the whole idea that they're pulling their own wagons. <sighs> so dumb. And why isn't the strong man pulling, by the way? Why is he in the back pushing? Like, these are clearly meant to be rolled from the front. So since you've got the strong guy, why isn't he in the front? Also, but I do like the scene. You know, I like the scene, I think. I think it's this one. Maybe it's the, yeah, it's this DLS scene. So um, uh, one of the other, um, uh, the wife of. Right there, that one. Yeah, that's it. The wife of the headman or whatever his name is. Um uh she lives up to her their reputation we've been calling them dirty little sociopaths and her first suggestion is why are these bad things around us happening they're clearly happening because there's a man with us yeah that's right that's why the all the landscape has changed and everything's going to crap because there's one guy following us and he changes and then what's my solution Take away their wheels and let them die. let, let them, them die. die. Literally, basically, like leave them to the evils around. And them. I was like, that was perfect. At okay, least, let's let's at listen least to it. Being character. It's so yeah. funny. It's as plain as lip fungus. He's also it's as plain as lip fungus. I'm like, what? <laughs> that's that's like no. Stop putting junk in your hair, like, and maybe you'll get, be a little healthier. Like, it's as plain as lip fungus. <sighs> maybe you'd have a society if you didn't know fe- about lip fungus. Bella. What yeah. precisely do you expect me to do about it? What you ought to have done at the camp. Okay. Take their wheels and leave them. <laughs> Take their wheels and leave them. But that's exactly what they do. They they they, they had a whole ritual about how they leave hey, everybody behind. Look, I respect her. She's <laughs> she's, she's staying true that's right. to the culture, the sociopathic who culture. She is. That's right. right. That's absolutely. This is what has brought them far. This community has thrived because they've left everybody behind. All right. So then, <laughs> then these warg boars or whatever they're supposed to be. Worst um, looking wolves. They're, they're, I think there's, I mean, look, okay, I'll tell you what they are. They are in fact wargs. They are from the Lord of the Rings online game. In the Lord of the Rings online game, wargs look different depending on which region you're in. It was one of those things okay. they did. And these are clearly a pull from a couple of different regions. Really? In, oh yeah, this is a Lord of the Rings online. I can give you, I can find you screenshots so, and send them. So to you. they're actually taking the bad-looking wolves from Lord of the Rings online and putting them into the show. They didn't even try to make their own bad looking wolves. They just, right, wargs. right. They, they just, just, they just made their wolves. CGI people. Yep. Awesome. There you go. I mean, the, it's, uh, the, it, oh my goodness. So, anyway, so, so it's bad looking wargs versus Encino yeah. Man. And then Encino Man, uh, he does a Dragon Ball Z punch and slams the ground and they all go flying back. So we're, we're in, we're in anime for a minute here. That is boom. Yep. Yeah, and the works work, works just like wow, he knocked us over. I guess we'll run away. Oh. So, so they do. Wow, and, know, and the way that they run, that's sorry. Look, they were cutting corners on the CGI budget. It was tough. So he gets in. Right, he's a little. He gets up hurt, and then we leave once again. His arm hurts, mm-hmm. and then my favorite scene. This has oh. got to be my favorite scene of the entire. There are how many people here? Let's count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 people in uniform. They have gathered an army, the Grand <laughs> Numenorian army of 12 people. I would remind our viewers, <laughs> Numenor is supposed to be 
I know we've said this before, the greatest human kingdom in the history, the greatest in military might, human kingdom in the history of Middle Earth. And they've been reduced with their queen, who wasn't ever a queen, going to Middle Earth, they've been reduced to recruiting 12 people who don't know how to fight as their our volunteer army. But don't worry, We'll be giving them real swords to play with because that's the worst way that you could ever, if you're ever going to train people, give them real swords. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, I know. I know. And that I, I noticed that I didn't bring it up because I thought it was just be so obvious that like this whole thing of them, like, like right there, he's literally swinging at him to kill him with a, mm -hmm. with a, <laughs> with, with a sword that Sauron forged apparently. Uh, <laughs> That's a pretty, he's, he's got a pretty short reach there in order to get him. But yeah, yeah, it's just, oh my gosh. And then of course they have no, they, since they have no army, they have to get the commander of um, the Northern Elven army of five people to <laughs> train the new Numenorean army. And I, I don't know, like what, what can we say about this scene that hasn't been said? Because it, it's, it's a horrible example of how to actually do any sword fighting because one, um, uh, you know, clearly she's like 5'2". She's smaller than all of them. She has reached the smaller. She's got her smug look on it first. And we do this whole sort of like Neo in the Matrix. I'm not going to get hurt. Look, and he's like, like they're trying to kill each other. Oh, my gosh. Like that, that swing would have taken her head off if, they, if she would have been able to not, not been able to uh, evade that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this I, everything about this and, and the smugness like this is a scene I've, i believe that this entire scene was written just so that we could see how how smug Galadriel is smug and badass right that's the whole point well, like she, she hasn't been able to show how smug she is for a whole episode so yeah yeah and naya on our discord chat she also mentioned that like like how sexist is it that she like slaps the guy on the butt but if somebody would have been done doing that to her like that would never have flown anywhere in any of this but no but since he's a young 18 year old who wants to go to war and he's unpracticed, I'm going to show you how much better I am and just going to give you a little bit of a love pat right there in your tushy. Ah, this is after she says, fight with your feet, not your arms. And she's fighting with her arms the entire time. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. Also, sword fighting, um, I'm sorry, does, does largely does. about the arms. I mean, sure, <laughs> sure, the feet anyway. have something to do with it. Didn't you see Halbrand kick up that sword in this episode? That was fighting <laughs> in a way. That works really well. I love this too. Now, this is an example of where they have to make Galadriel super duper powerful. Like she's using her elven magic because right here where she's like, okay, I'm going to elbow him. And that guy goes, Whoa! oh my gosh, I'm falling down. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, look, elbow. that's, that's prison guard Galadriel. That's the one that where she like lightly, lightly shoved five grown guards into the cell and then closed the door behind them. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know what else can be said. Well, well, at the end of this, at the end of this uh, shot, at the end of this uh, scene, we do get her uh, her blouse slightly torn, mm. and uh, and we get the first uh, officer of the Numenorean army. That's right, right here. Because he was able to cut her just a little bit, and uh, he becomes lieutenant. So they've got a lieutenant. He will soon left, be the admiral because they have nobody tenant. above him. Yeah. Left, oh, sorry, lieutenant. <laughs> That's right. There's no one above him, so he gets it's two promotion. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> there's, eventually, he'll be he'll be he'll be he'll be just rise up those ranks because they've got the other eleven guys who can right. fill the other ones in because that's their entire army. Here's that's a, is like the whole idea that this is a grand like they sh showed us this incredibly large city with thousands of structures dwellings a a stadium of some sort and yet we get these claustrophobic scenes with a, a chorus in the background it looks like a greek chorus almost something like that's that right in the play right like watching and then a sword fight between two people in a small alleyway and this is what they're calling a military invasion this is what they're going to be going for I, yeah this is this is like a cw production this is not a this is give it there's much credit there's no there's no nothing epic about it maybe i am but there's <laughs> but they don't they don't know how to do epic they're they, they have 
they have literally the most epic civilization, human civilization in the history of Middle Earth. Yeah. And, and, it, and it really does feel, we've said it before, but it really does feel like a, a high school or a community <laughs> theater production. So, well, and you yeah. know, I, I, I feel like the actors, I mean, I don't know about Galadriel. She's not shown us any, any sort of uh, uh, stretch at all in her ability to act. Like, I don't see any nuance at all. But I think, like, the actors could be good. The guy doing our fares on, he could be fine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually don't mind our our Farazan. He, Hello? but like the things our Farazan says often are like in this scene where he explains the motivation of why it would be actually advantageous for Numenor. I mean, weirdly, Numenor doesn't apparently have any anything. Trees. This, is, this is before they <laughs> they have any um, settlements in Middle Earth or anything yeah. like that. Wait, but yeah. so they they've messed with that timeline. But anyway, so here he is, and. And he's, he actually gives decent reasons for why mm -hmm. they, they could invade. Mm -hmm. But that would require you to invade. By the way, 500 people, soon to be 300, is is not an invasion. You're not going to gain any glory from that. So it makes it doesn't make any sense. But his reasoning is is, is at it's, least it makes solid. Sense. It's yeah. logical. It's a political uh, machination. Also, it's logical. And he's the only person that uses logic in these situations. And he's the bad guy. We're supposed to be rooting against him because he's clearly but, the bad guy. Just like the wolves, I'm rooting for him now, too. Well, that's it. Like when the wolves were chasing the hobbits, I actually, I'll tell you something serious. Seriously, I hoped I'm like, well, one of the ways they could show what, how real the danger is is to have one of, them one of the wargs eat oh, one, of the, one of the Harfoots. And that would like, that would show how terrifying it is. And I would actually like that. Like eat one of the psychopaths, please. Yeah, eat one of the, it, would have, please. it would have been so much better. Oh, alas. So much better. All right, so we get this whole scene. He's talking about how he's actually going to, uh, ultimately, he's going to take control because he's going to be in control of all the resources, I guess, or something like that. And I don't know, whatever. We'll, we'll see where that storyline ends up going. We find out here <laughs> the scene where some ran the, the king randomly tells her, don't go darkness. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Go Although I was hoping he would say, don't go Harfoots. That would have been the one. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, don't go there. That's there right. are, there are Harfoots. <laughs> there are bloodthirsty small people. Yeah, it's like he's got Alzheimer's or something because he recognizes her. To Middle Earth. Earth. Don't go to Middle Earth, he says. All that awaits you there. Oh, that's right. All that awaits you there. And I was like, yeah, it's Harfoots. It's like, it's the worst thing ever. These these dirty little sociopaths are going to like <laughs> screw with your entire world. What father what awaits me? Yeah. What's funny? Darkness. Is that the darkness? If this, uh, which okay. Halbro is Sauron, uh, the darkness is already there in Numenor. They're simply bringing him back to Middle Earth, I guess, so that what I don't know what uh, he's going to take over the armies there and then assault them from that point. I don't know. I just... Yeah, I mean, anyway. so so a thought from our missing companion Dan. Dan says invading Middle Earth with three boats that appear to hold six feet each is dumb. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Succinct. See well how said, say in so few words. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, so here's right. the, other, the, the other only other action that happens with the hobbits. I mean, Harfoots. Sorry. Uh, DLSs. Yeah. Yeah. DLSs is that uh, he frees his hand is is damaged from slamming the ground. Great, it's bruised or whatever. And then he's using ice instead of an ice pack. He's like, I'm going to encase my whole arm in ice. He does that. She grabs his arm. She gets encased in ice. He blows up. He's like, Oh no! Oh, and then blows up and she gets uh, thrown. thrown back and is by the way by the way why the heck she grab his arm like he's in the middle of doing something unnatural and magical why would she grab his arm stop asking questions michael what are you doing you're not allowed to do that anymore things Sorry. logic like Sorry. you said the only person with logic is our fair <sighs> so logic here yeah okay logic is only our fair zones i understand so he sealed his arm all right all right great so on we are been on we go to um, Linden, and here, oh, this is this, thus it begins. And so it begins, as the meme says, uh, from from a, <laughs> from a real Lord of the Rings movie. Um, yeah, so here we are, and Gilgalad is trying to get Durin to admit that they're doing something in Moria, and uh, Durin deflects and makes up a story about the table being sacred to his people, which or the, the stone and we would only use it in uh, in uh, monuments and uh, grave burials, uh, graves, burials, yeah. graves. And so and then so which is funny. I mean, like, especially because it turns out that he's just making it up for, yeah. for misdirection. I mean, like, like I laugh. It's the but... only time they actually set it something up to be like revealed later, which it was 
it's the only time it's ever happened. Like, hey, and, look, it, we that was, this joke. and it was it was actually a decent joke, and I, mm-hmm. I laughed when it was revealed. But but at this time, I didn't laugh, and the reason I didn't laugh here is because I mean, little did I know because the scene hadn't yet finished how stupid the elves were going to be by the end of the scene, but or by the end of a couple scenes from now. But but there is, um, oh no, it's the same string of scenes after Durin's mm-hmm. gone gone here. Mm-hmm. So, but the elves are I mean, like, look, you're high king Gelgalad. Here you are at a table, and the dwarf tells you a story about the stone. You, uh, you've you lived thousands and thousands of years. You know, you're not dumb enough to say, to to be all apologetic about using the stone. I mean, it's just dumb. I know. It's, and then give it it's a funny you. joke from Durin's angle, but from, from Gil Gallad's angle, he's an idiot. So <laughs> that, that much is clear. He has, he has made us, he, he has made us realize that the, being a high king, of the elves doesn't take a whole lot of uh, smarts. Yeah, because but sadly, for my sake and everybody else's, this was the least dumb thing that <laughs> Gil Gallad says in this sequence of scenes. So once it's over and they've apologized and promised to return the table, then we have a conversation between Elrond and Gil Gallad, and this is where the suck truly begins. So here we are. And we're about to ruin all of elves. Since we've ruined hobbits, we've established that men are either idiots or bigots. Now we're going to ruin elves. And so Gilgalad tries to get Elrond to break his oath. And he shows him the corruption. Apparently, the upside down from Stranger Things is invading Middle Earth. Because he, he, he tells a story about the supposed... Well, he has Elrond tell a story about the supposed um, birth of Mithril. So go ahead, Jonathan. So so this guy, this is a this is a battle on a mountaintop, Mm -hmm. which I didn't did that that did happen, right? A battle on between a Balrog and somebody at some point. Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, is that Glorfindel? I guess maybe. Yeah, I mean, so first of all, this isn't. There's no battle on mountaintop. That's dumb. Because because this mountaintop in this story is the Misty Mountain. Oh, it's That's a Misty Mountain. Yeah, of course. It doesn't make any sense. So there were there were never any battles oh, between no. elves and Balrogs in the Misty Mountain. So... In Gondolin, there was battles between elves and Balrogs when Gondolin yes. was invaded. Right. Yeah, so, and, so, and... and Gondolin is gone. So right. uh, at this point. But so this is entirely invented. And so, go ahead. so is this guy holding a Silmaril? Is that what yes. they're saying? Yes, okay, he, has so a, he's he has a Silmaril. Yep. And he's, he has... he's imbuing the tree because trees are magical and revolutionary in there in their world i guess the, the the power they give to trees just regular trees is a little much because the importance of trees does not mean is it's not just from them being trees it's them for, it's from them being descended from the trees right that's the whole point of the tree in numenor and the two, that'd uh, be the, the two trees is what you're referring to it's the two trees sorry and also then uh the uh the trees that galadriel has in lorien are from the malar uh, yeah yeah, the yeah the Malorn are from are from uh, ultimately from Numenor because those trees were given to Gilgalad. The, the seeds of those were given to Gilgalad, and he gives them to Gladriel, and she planted them in Lorien. Anyway, so the whole point of the trees is just sort of lame and dumb. And so he holds on to it, and he's fighting a Balrog around a tree because that makes sense. And the tree. Well, is- not just that. Not just that. The Bal. They're like okay. Look at this scene. This is all. This is is really bad. Um college level take a college level take on asian philosophy this is the yin and the yang this is the white and the black the darkness and the light and they're and they're 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 around the central figure of the tree and part of the tree is darkness from the balrog and part of the tree is light from the elf and so it's this taoist crap that that is just i mean it's not even real Taoist crap it's just it's it and then lightning strikes the tree and oh, look at that there it is and supposedly the lightning creates mithril that goes down through the roots of the tree into the mountain and the mithril has the the unending un, 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 light of the silveril and the unending and the strength and darkness of evil <sighs> what i don't get is when I when I when I saw this, I was like, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Did I did I in in the last thirty years of reading Tolkien, did I actually miss something?" That's what I thought too. Earth? And like, That's what I, thought so, too. And like an, I had to go back and like start looking up Mithril and stuff because it was, it was, it was like no. 
I don't think Tolkien no. ever described where Mithril comes from, no. other than that it's in the depths of Kazakhstan. No, and you missed nothing. Okay. This is baloney. Not only is this baloney, but this is completely, this isn't just finding a place where the Lord doesn't say something and making up dumb crap, which is what they've done before. This is finding a place where the Lord definitively says, we know where the three Cimarils are. The three Cimarils oh, yeah. are, one of them's in the sky on the brow of Arendil. Right. One of them in the ocean, thrown there by Maglor. Yep, I'm one of them. Sure. I think it was Maglor or Mythros, one of the two. Maglor, Maglor, and throws it into the ocean. And the other one fell into a fiery chasm, was taken by another son of Fionor, and jumped into a fiery chasm, a la Gollum, but on purpose. So, you, the three symbols are gone. There was no. This is this is utterly impossible. No elf yeah. in Tolkien's Middle Earth would ever believe this crap. This is it. this is made up BS, and and not only that, but we're about to find out how dumb that made up BS goes because in the scenes following this one, well, I guess we'll get there. So maybe maybe okay. we'll go. And and well, here's the other thing to think about: is if they knew this story, and if Gilgalad knew that this Mithril had been created from the light of the Silmarils, would he not have made an effort at some point, perhaps, to look into it instead mm -hmm. of waiting until? Especially since he knew it was the Misty Mountains in, yeah. this, in this dumb story. Yeah, and so what happened to this elven warrior? I, I, the, it was created. So I don't know. Did he like get blasted into some of the reeds? What exactly happened? With Tol it just it, they no. leave the story at the end. It's it's like an old wife. It's tale. not about the the fight between the elf warrior. It's, it's a it's about yin and yang. It's, it's about the light and the darkness creating Mithril. It's, yeah. it's, and, it's, it's and you know what's going to happen philosophy. now. Like as soon as they they set this up, what's going to happen is they're going to be like, we need Mithril. And it's going to bring us back. Other, otherwise, we're going to fade next April 24th. Well, yeah, wait, wait, like wait, wait, because we're, we're going to come up upon the two dumbest quotes about that. Yeah. So but, we're but here's the thing. Well, and, and we're told uh, Gil Galad asks Elrond to break his oath. His oath to? Durin. Oh, yes, yeah. right. Oh, yes, right. I was thinking to the Gladriel, but yeah, yes, right. To Durin. Um, yeah. And... Uh, um, so, so here's what they're doing. They're going to set up, they have to get Mithril to survive. Mithril's not going to be enough. Sauron's going to come over and say, hey, look, or, or Halbrand is going to come over and say, hey, look, why don't we create these rings with this power that you could use anyway from whatever? I don't know where they're going to get the power from because they haven't established that elves have any actual like, like power. Like, like Gladwell has no power outside of being an awesome swordsman or semi yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, and then they're going to do, they're going to say, like, oh, the Mithril's not enough make these rings and then the, the, there's going to be some strife with the dwarves and blah 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 it's just going to be this whole like we we need magical power to survive when the the point of the rings was not to uh to give them longer life or to make them stay in middle earth it was there was an it's it's done in a way that tolkien set up in a such such a better way in shorter um in a shorter plot line than they're trying to create that makes it a, a complete like interweaving of things that should never be interwoven together with mithril and the power and the elves and now uh, yeah. yeah and we're going to get we're going to get a little farther into um the metaphysical breaches that they do the idiocy the metaphysical idiocy about this what 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 would follow if you're trying to um if you actually follow this through because we're going to have two other scenes later on but I would just like to point out here too that Gilgalad point um, states that one of the reasons he sent away Galadriel in, in the scene he says that he sent her away um, in the hopes because he already knew that corruption had come, darkness had come, and and because he you know the upside down had already invaded his tree that he was looking at, <laughs> and and so so he sent her away hoping that the last of the warriors going away would cause the darkness to away, which is utterly foolish. This man shouldn't be Elvin stable master, let alone high king, if that's the way he thinks. This this person, like he is, he, this is so dumb. Like the elves have just finished this massive war with Morgoth and his all of his forces, including Sauron. And the idea that if we just stop fighting and send our warriors away, maybe the corruption will go away is there's no logic oh. like you say right there's no logic why, why, why would you make that think that they haven't set up a reason for this to actually no reason be, uh, the, no the, reason the, the answer no no it's just Maybe some it's... Fe fever dream of some bad writer and how do we know like why is there a blight on the tree there they haven't set up any idea for the they've showed us one leaf earlier that had some sort of blight on it and now it's all over this tree does this is this blight indicative of 
them losing the ability to survive in Middle Earth, and so they need. Is it a geographic life. thing? Is it appearing in one place? Is it? It's just it's another a mystery box. It's it's, it's told. Yeah, it's told. We're, we're told. It's not even a mystery box. They're going to open. They're they're, they're deliberately not ever going to open it and tell us why the light is happening. Because remember how far away Linden is from Mordor. It's not even in. It's, this is nothing. It's nowhere near a stronghold of Sauron. It's yeah. it's it's just. It's simply the upside down invading and has a, as much logic to it as the upside down does, namely none, just fiat. <laughs> All right, so here we go. All right, so moving so, on. Next so scene. next next scene is the um, yeah oh right That's right the he, please please let me go with you guys and then it doesn't work and um, um, and essentially this leads to his stowing away on board a ship while our fair's own son comes on to to blow, blow up the ship. Which yep. with what what exactly blows up? Because the oil, oil. is going to blow up. Oil doesn't blow up that way. You'd need something with some sort of explosive capacity. Shut there. up, Jonathan. Stop with your <laughs> logic. Everything we know. This is Hollywood, so everything is filled with gasoline. Everything, every large structure in existence is filled with gasoline and can explode. Yeah. Okay. So 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 then he saves. Uh, do we know his name, the kid's name? I don't know our fair. I, I know his. I, I, I never. I won't say that I don't know it because I I forgot it. I just never bothered to okay, learn so, it in the first yes, place. Right. <laughs> no, I just don't remember it either. So this is his big moment. This is what's going to endear him to his father. Is he was stowing aboard a ship. He saves the guy who destroys the two ships. And then he no. lies to his father about no, it. Lies to his father. Happened. So this is the endearing Isildur. That gets his due being on a ship. Uh, That's right. Uh, 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 yeah. And Just why? Wait a minute. Uh, let's see. I guess there are three left. Look, there's one there. And how did this one? I guess this one blew up over here, mm -hmm. and it caused the fireworks on this ship to be blown up too. Oh, they do. Have everything fireworks. is no, no, filled. No, 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 no. Everyone is. Everything is filled with gasoline. Wait a second. There are two more ships back here. Shh, Maybe that's. Yeah. Quiet, you, <laughs> and your logic. <laughs> oh man all right so i don't what is this scene i don't even remember the scene this is what, what are they talking about here our fair is on they got to bring uh bring halbrand the next morning or something like that at first light well this is a weird scene because here Farazon decides that now that there's two ships blown up maybe we're wrong and we shouldn't go to middle earth at all after all which like his whole purpose of going to middle earth and establishing a foot a foothold i guess on middle earth in some way and helping out the peoples and then and therefore you know, being able to rule and exact tribute and all that stuff. That reasoning, that reasoning doesn't go away because you lose two ships. That's not a, it's not a thing. So, well, no... but remember, Michael, that's two fifths of their army. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's, see, is that interesting? Because that, that the writers would write that in, this is the queen leaving her kingdom and taking her like they even tell us that there's like the cavalry they i forget the name of that you know there's the queen's yeah. guard as well like there's a number of military arms i mean we've been making jokes about the volunteer army which is fair enough but um this is no one's actually they're not expecting us to believe that numenor as a nation only has five ships so it must be that they were just going to take five ships because that's all the people they could get or yeah, that I guess, willing to well, commit or something. They have no <laughs> army, so I guess that's the that's what, who they got, right? It's all the people who are who are afraid that the elves are going to take their jobs. You know, you know, our problem is we're we're sitting here trying to find a way to inject some sense into this, and there yeah, just isn't gotta, any sense. We got to yeah. just move on. All right, so <laughs> speaking of moving on, here we go. Here is the great okay. Stella Brimble okay. and why Ar okay. Dill left to go to oh get his to, in order to uh to to save middle earth from morgoth why did yarn yarndale leave because he was the only one because i had to because i was the only one what did he say exactly um the uh aaron deal uh quote was as you remember something about like because he was the one that could or something some dumb dumb tribe um, it was lost in the even dumber tribe that that, uh, that i fit at caleb Brimbor said afterwards because now we get to you know, the key question which Elrond should have asked, like, because he's an intelligent elf, supposedly, back in the previous scene with Gil-galad, 
was, okay, explain this to me exactly. How is Mithril supposed to save us? Like all this corruption is happening. Where's your evidence that Mithril can save us? And and how does this work exactly? Like, like any thinking person, but as we're going to find in a series of scenes, successive scenes, not one person thinks, not even my favorite uh, character left in the show, which is Vernon the Fourth. Not one person thinks. So here we are, and Celebrimbor gives his quote. And I wrote it down because it was so stupid that I had to play it over three times. And his, here's his quote about how it works, how Mithril is going to... Elrond asks him, is this really our only salvation? Like this rock, this 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 stone, this metal, Shiny rock. This shiny metal. And, and Celebrimbor tells him, quote... If we can secure vast quantities of it quickly, enough to saturate every last elf in the light of the Valar once more, then yes, yes, it very well could be. (laughs) Where did they get that from, dude? What is this? What is this? Like, are these elves, are they all Tesla models? Like, have to be plugged in? Like, <laughs> yes, if we get enough mithril and we plug it into every elf and saturate them, like, what is it? How does this work? I don't, I don't know. Nobody, and, and, nobody saturates up, like, the light in a metal is going to... They need their tanning beds. They need to look good, right? Oh, my gosh, this well, is and, so And here's dumb. the thing. They, they, the elves woke up to the stars. And the stars are what is important to them because that was the first thing that they saw, right? And the stars of Varda. And so to say that the trees even, like if they would have done something with the stars, yeah, that would have made a little more sense even, like from, from Tolkien's cosmology. But, but they, 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 the trees were there, but the trees were never the definition of who they were. Also, for, for the light that Feanor put into the Silmarils, yes, it was the cat, it was the last light of the trees, but the real grief wasn't necessarily for the elves, it was for the Valar losing the light of the trees. And, and, and you know, at the at the chance of sounding really dumb because I'm I'm lowering myself to Amazon's writer's level by asking a question <laughs> like this, why is it Celebrimbor, assuming your harebrained dumbass theory is true that you could infuse elves by sticking a metal on them or something? How, why 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 is it it's that they the, don't the mithril enema all evil from the strength of the darkness of the balrog which is also there so where, where what's your principle like what are you working off of here that says you can save the elf but wait it gets worse because in a couple of scenes elrond's going to re-explain this idea that calibrimbor has told him to durin and it's even dumber and it's it, like every time someone brings this up, it's like Gil Gallant tells the story and it was stupid. And my daughter started yelling, my 14 year old, we're watching. Oh, she's still watching it with you. Wow. Oh, yeah, because she'll only watch it with me because we sit and mock it. And then, so Gil Gallant tells the story. And we're like, what? That is so, d- that is not where Mythical comes. There's no Cimarron. What is going on here? And then we get to this scene and it's Kelly Brimbor and Elrond. And we're, we're our <laughs> jaws you, just dropped. You took it down another notch. How, you found Mithril, a way. Mithril is the. To, to to lower and make it dumber by talking by elf teslas and now all elves are teslas need to be plugged in here, here we, we are. are last scene elrond and um not second second last scene actually it's elrond and durin and elrond tells durin a lot of dumb things and i i i'm got mad about some of them but here's his quote the third time we've heard this this major plot point, which is now all elves suck, just like all the hobbits suck and all the men suck. Um, Elrond tells Durin, quote, because Durin asks this really interesting question. He's like, what? Why? Because yeah. <laughs> Elrond says, says you, you, know, like, you said, we're all going to perish. This really interesting question. Why? <laughs> That's the really Exactly, because Elrond's like, like you, we need agree. Mithril or our whole race will perish. And Durin's like, what? Why? And here's Elrond's reason. So now third time's a charm, right? Without Mithril, well, he doesn't say without Mithril, he just, that's understood. His quote is, "Our, in other words, what will happen to us if we don't have Mithril? Our immortal souls will dwindle into nothing, slowly diminishing until we are but shadows swept away by the tide of time forever. In other words, I have now changed all of Tolkien's cosmology about the elves entirely in a series of three dumbass statements. I'm making the third. 
Gil Gallant made the first, Caliburn Borby the second. Now I'm making the third, and it gets worse every time. And every now, time. I miss the that. immortality of the elves dwindles into nothing if you don't plug some freaking mithril in their neck or whatever and infuse them with a light. It is so stupid. And then the writers show that even my favorite characters, which is Drew in the fourth, can't come up with anything. He just sits down and makes some joke about, so the fate of all the elves is in my hands, blah, blah, blah. So he doesn't do what any rational being in the history of the world would do when told that this weirdly weird thing is going to happen and a whole race is going to die unless this really weird thing happens. He would ask, so walk me through again how this works. <laughs> Explain how this all works. Like, how do you get plugged in a mithril? Why do you have evidence you're not going to turn dark like so, the Balrog? And not- so why but, wouldn't we keep this mithril for ourselves if that's what happens if that's what right. it's good for like, hey i i would i would we want to get plugged in how about we get the light of the valor yeah. what you like we have some outlets we and if this in. were true can you imagine the value of frodo's mithril coat in in uh rivendell if he actually wore that there they would be like <laughs> <laughs> yeah elrond would be like grabbing it rubbing his face up against it <laughs> <laughs> it would be so <laughs> they ruin so much uh, they not only ruin tolkien what came before but they ruin what comes after like they 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 are they are they are unadulterated in their ability to ruin everything about Tolkien because okay. nothing has to make sense anymore so right. sorry Go sorry ahead. everyone Don't i had my Michael, Michael Michael Adriel moment for episode we'll 4 sleep. where i start we'll hyperventilating well <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, uh all right so we can do, let's take a step back to the other scenes we don't care about like um the the people leaving adar comes in where they all, all the people from the the unnecessary tower half the people right. leave they swear their fealty to sauron and he's like wait you're not sauron and then he's like in order to show that uh, you have fealty to me it must be sworn in blood so kill this kid he holds the kid and uh they go to uh, they, they they we don't know whether he kills him or not well no yeah we i think we do he kills him i guess they don't show it because yeah. you can't show them killing kids uh and then here is uh, theo learning how to aim higher that's right deer deer. that's that's the the breadth of their training is aim higher and then he shows Aaron deer this the sword and Aaron deer's like wait there's a sword there's a sword the sword it's not a sword how dare you call it a sword it's (laughs) a key because Uh, a key to what i I don't to stabbing some guy in the middle of his chest because that's what this that's what the um but it's a stone relief to show. something that he is revealed here uh mm-hmm. this reminds me sorry when i saw him doing this here i thought of indiana jones uh raiders of the lost ark where they're like revealing stuff and i just want to go like <laughs> the beginning. like it's like uh, oh they're revealing the the, the the statue that should not be revealed and they have to have everybody chase indiana anyway so i don't know i can even <laughs> tell like there's a there's a there's a sword thing here i guess but it does it fit in there i don't know but what makes it a key i don't know but it's a key which i said in my other review it, it, in my other review here it reminds me of uh hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy galaxy life universe and everything where they build a giant supercomputer that takes seven and a half millions million years to answer the question of what is the ultimate what is the answer to the ultimate question of life the universe and everything and the answer is 42 but they don't know what the question is. So they figured out the answer. They just don't know the question. So he figured out the key, but he just doesn't know where the key goes. But he knows it's key. Uh, it just, uh, 42. Another mystery box. Like, they have to make it a key to something. So what's it a key to? You know what? Not only do I don't, do I not know, but I really don't you care. You don't care? Yeah. Yeah, I've reached this point where, like, it is, it is impressive on one level that Amazon has the ability to make a lifelong Tolkien fan like myself, like, really not care about any of these characters <laughs> this is an interesting timeline an interesting um potential tableau for a story and they have done such a terrible job in storytelling i just don't care I'm like okay it's key so what don't care and they hold it up and it ends once again with them in the tower not doing anything but with the orcs approaching them here right. that i guess that's the orcs down and there. bronwyn is talking now about giving up so you know yeah. who knows so- who knows who cares and then the final scene that then we have the give me the meat and give it to me raw with durin and, and elrond and elrond with his dumbest quote, the, then, I, the dumbest whatever how many how many how many dwarves is this or how many elves is this carrying a table six I six think. one two yeah six people carrying a stone table these elves are amazing and they, at least uh, nope nope they don't have long hair only three of them do uh 
That looks like Elijah Wood there on the left. Did he get a cameo? <laughs> uh, so they carry the, the stone table back that Disa wanted, and that was the whole reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, for the joke there. And Durin has the joke, yeah. And uh, Durin has the their life in his hands. Um, and uh, and now we have the conflict with him. And, and Durin, no, but Durin says he's going to go mine Mithro. So what we've done here, actually, like Tolkien told us why the dwarves mine Mithro. They de- they mine they delved too greedily and too deep. Mm-hmm. So that was like it was their greed that that led that was why they did it but now and i'll quote our our missing partner here just so, gonna bring that up yes dan said you, this oh you want to go you want to do this okay no go. you got it right yes he says he says wait the mithril is going to heal the elves they're going to make the dwarves delve too greedily and too deeply into a humanitarian mission to save the elves so true. all right what a great way of putting it. it's the it's the dwarves <laughs> humanitarian mission to the elves and because they're such nice guys they'll release the balrog that apparently was stuck at the top maybe maybe the balrog got electrocuted and is sitting in a coma that's uh, right at the bottom of the i won't be surprised like now that you've told this utterly moronic like clinically moronic story about the <laughs> about the origin of mithro and there was a balrog why isn't it the balrog so yeah. lightning strikes the tree mithro gets formed uh, probably a big crack opens up and the balrog falls in and he's trapped inside the misty mountains and that's why he's down there with the mithro yes uh, so just, sad oh it's so, so sad. there you go so we are nowhere nearer closer to any sort of resolution of anything nobody has really moved other than the magical movement of durin into and, and elrond into places that <laughs> mere moments from fast Kazal travel doom yeah. to region to linden and back and these guys they're going to carry right this is linden they're going to carry this this wooden or sorry this this stone table all the way to Kazal which has got to weigh like, like two, two or three thousand pounds yeah yeah, they're gonna walk the whole way because they're, they're not. They're not. They they, they own, they're in their fast yep. travel. There's, there's yeah, no click. True. They'll, they'll open up fast a travel. scroll of portal. Yeah, get back to uh, Haradrim. Isn't that mm. one? Har- no, no, no. Wait, I'm trying to remember. This is Diablo two that I'm thinking about. The one. <laughs> so yeah, so we are we are through this episode and on to episode six. only three more to go. I'm telling you, man. On Thursday nights when I do my live review. I, I look forward to it the first week thinking like, okay, I got to experience something new. This would be kind of cool. Like what, what have they done? Um, I was not, I was not exactly thinking positively about it. Like I'm, I'm really looking like, I wasn't saying I'm really looking forward to this. Wow. I can't wait to watch their rendition of Tolkien. I'll be like, all right, this is new. Right. This, this could be something. There could be something that I like about it. Uh, they have completely thwarted that. And now I kind of hate doing it on Thursday nights when they release it at 11 PM here. Uh, honestly, and, honestly, John, that I'm beginning to be convinced that someone's doing this on purpose. Like they, they're ruining. They're, they're just taking things. Like now they've ruined the elves. So, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, yeah, yeah. Three more episodes well, to go. Any final thoughts? I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to the final three. I'm looking forward to being over okay. to having a, an idea about it. But My where do we go from thought. here? Like, like, so, so, and so okay, go ahead. Let's your final My thought. My final I'm thought is three word piece of advice for Amazon fire them all <laughs> fire them all well and i was going to say that would be the, the question two. i was going to ask is what can be done what what could you do in a second season to salvage the story like, that's give up on it can so, you do okay. something hey this is a great that's a great bonus episode we should do an episode when the eight when the eight episodes are done we've we've yeah. had our review we should actually do it because i can't answer that question right now jonathan because i don't know where they're gonna it's where they're yet. where where are they finishing up and, and then that i could tell it. but for starters just from a structural perspective what they need to do I, and i'm not even like i'm a lore guy i love tolkien mm-hmm. i have a lot of nits to pick about the lore side of things all the time with everything here Forget about all that. Forget about all that. Just from a, a simple streaming show TV series perspective, fire all the writers and find yourself some writers that can write. Find some people that understand epic fantasy or epic anything storytelling and just just get somebody that can write. St- kidnap the Game of Thrones people, writers, because yeah, they can right. write. I can write. I don't like their world very much, but they can write and and get them in, like whatever it takes. Find someone. You have enough money, Jeff Bezos. Find people yeah. that can write because you need writers, and this is crap. 
Yeah. Yeah. They need to go to, um, to somebody like who, who knows story really well, really well, who's still alive. Like, I don't know. Orson Scott card comes to mind. Okay. They might not hire him cause he's Mormon. Right. right. <laughs> but, but somebody who knows what, what it takes to write a good story and it has written a world and a believable world with characters that, uh, you like that you hate and that are nuanced and they don't, they don't, they are, they are completely incapable. So yeah, they have to actually, fire after this debacle, you know, he, I don't think he'd do it, but Jackson could write, could write a decent second age. Too. No, he'd be, he'd be like, uh, so can we restart? Can we reset? Can we forget about this? Is that possible? <laughs> I, I think they have to do that. And <laughs> you this goes see the whole... opening scene in season two is like someone waking up in a sweat. It was also, it was all a dream. <laughs> all season, all, all season <laughs> one was a dream. Wakes up <laughs> she like, wakes up. She's like, that was horrible. Waste. I was a terrible person. <laughs> but luckily I have a husband now and a child. Like I was supposed to. I mean, I guess it goes back to that they only had the appendices and they felt like that they had to, I guess, encompass as much of the appendices in one storyline as they could. But, but imagine if they could have taken the fall of Gondolin and made that into a story. Like that, that is an incredible, and there's survival at the end, right? There's destruction. Oh man, um, and it would have been, uh, yeah. Or the story of the Rings of Power, the first war of Sauron versus <laughs> oh, the Elves. The, the Rings of Power. Since it's that's what the show is freaking called, right. why don't you do this that? This isn't the story of the Rings of Power. Is that... Or, and please note, this is a separate story: the fall of Numenor, the right. rise and fall yeah. of Numenor. Yeah. Like that's a great story. Tell that. Stop. I mean, oh, I mean, I think you're right, Jonathan. I think that's probably what they're doing. They're like trying to jam in as much as possible. Yeah um yeah so at, at least you know what it's going to be uh it's it it won't resemble anything that comes later if somebody does do a story of the rings of power or if somebody does do a story of the fall of numenor well, they won't look at this and go like so this was a great example of how to do a story about the fall of numenor because it'll it won't be the same thing at all because you, you the story is completely different You'll have to actually create a Numenor that has a grand army. You'll actually have to create a Sauron who comes in and is known to be Sauron as manipulative and eventually changes our pharaohs on and makes them worship Morgoth. And they are, you know, it, I mean, but it'll, it would take time. Yeah. So here's, a, you know, like it has its own problems. But if you if you saw the first couple episodes of Andor, um, I did not. But go ahead. So what they were trying, I'm just going to talk about it from a meta perspective. Um, they're they were trying to take like an overarching epic story and instead tell a small story inside of it and then tie it out to a larger story. Yeah. Uh, that's their idea. Apparently. I don't know how well they'll carry it off in the end, but that's, that's the, and so they put a lot of effort into making their opening story really sort of gritty and realistic. Um, yeah. I can imagine, for example, a story about the fall of Numenor where in the first season, even, you get almost no views, maybe a couple of mild cameos from a distance or something, of the great ruler, rulers of Numenor, where the story is in fact based around around some characters that end up being. And then you, as this, you unfold the story of the rise of Numenor and fall of Numenor, you can tell it over multiple seasons. Um, you could tell it with the and the invasion of Middle Earth and the fight against Sauron, and then taking Sauron back to Numenor and the corruption of our fairs on and um, like. And then the eventual fall, like that could all be told, even with taking characters that never appeared in Tolkien, but they were, they really would exist yeah, in this world. I totally agree. You could, you could show the massive power of a nation like Numenor, where you feel the viewer feels like the characters that whose life they're in are truly like tiny cogs in this massive wheel. Cause this is an empire. This is a, this is a, a, yeah. a, a human empire, the likes of which there's never been seen before. Like that by itself, that storyline by itself would be un enough for five seasons easily. Um, yeah, and you could tell a really good story. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It'll be an interesting year between uh, the close of this here and the uh, creation of the next next season, because there, there's not going to be any ability for them to to come around and say, "Look at the success, the massive success this was, both critical and in viewership," uh, and they're going to have to change something because it's not working. Have you written a an, a review for Amazon? I have. Did it get accepted? It did. Mine did not. Oh no! <laughs> I tried twice. I didn't. Act, I didn't actually like use any criticisms about the woke stuff. All I talked about was the writing. Yeah. And and uh, and me too. And it it won't. It I won't think accept, there's a. There, it's like review. it's a quota. They can only accept so many one star reviews in order to maintain that three and a half star that they have on Amazon right now. No, you're probably right. 
Uh, all right. Well, well, thanks everybody for, for following along with us. I know this was long, but there was a lot to go into because I think it, uh, if the, the show delves a lot from the lore, but in this one, when you change the, the makeup of the basic makeup of the Elven race into something that Tolkien, uh, did not intend for them ever to be, which is for them to be wasting away if they weren't in the light of the trees. Uh, then, then I think that demands a greater discussion about why it's such a problem. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us. Again, if you like what you heard, please subscribe below. Please like, please share this. And if you really like what you heard, please head over to thewondering.com slash patron, where you can join our patron tra- platform. You can get access to our upcoming message boards, our extended podcast, and our Discord chat, which is great because we we get some feedback from you guys and we let you know where things are. And I'll post pictures of me waiting for my son <laughs> at his soccer game last night. I was just so bored. I'm like, soccer, soccer practice. Sorry, it wasn't this game. It was just soccer. So sitting there at night in a parking lot, just waiting. So in any case, it's a lot of fun to be there. I hope you join us. It's free the first month, $4 after that. Uh, and it's at the slash patron. So thanks for joining us. And we'll see you uh, next week when we hit up episode six. That'll be what three quarters of the way done. And we're looking forward to it. We'll make it through. Stay strong, everyone. We'll <laughs> Take care.